Continuing my talk with uh, Mr Gorn, uh, I suppose it'd be remiss uh, not to talk about what happened in Scotland. Um, being that you're a nationalist and you've gone on your Facebook, on your social media, saying that it, it well, you made it assume that they made a mistake by staying with the UK. No, I, I'm not, not, wouldn't be as presumptuous as that. Um, I, I think all I reflected on and, and do reflect on, and I, I suppose I was, I was quite surprised this morning waking up. Um, I wasn't necessarily surprised at where, the, way, the way the vote went, because I think that had been anticipated really, um, but I was really quite uh, genuinely uh, I think it wouldn't go as, I think be strong enough to say upset this morning. I thought, oh, this is a real shame because there was a, a golden opportunity there for people who had aspiration and hope to do something that could have been quite uh, remarkable. Um, and uh, the the people who uh, sort of uh, go for on, on, on the no camp who had at a very early stage uh, internally described their project as Project Fear uh, decided uh, to, to, to um, scare people away from, from making that bold decision. Now I'm absolutely sure that a lot of people have reached their decision to say no for all the right reasons but there were a lot of the wavering voters certainly in all the Vox Pops running up to the vote who had uh, said, well, I'm probably going to vote no because I'm a bit scared of this de decision. I fear what the future lies. I'm anxious about. I'm concerned. I'm scared. All this sort of stuff was 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 what kept coming out, um, which is why I said it's a shame in a way that um, uh, you know uh, aspiration and hope has been defeated okay. by fear. Um, a lot of my uh, followers on Facebook disagree with me, but you hey did hope. get quite a lot of feedback about. Um, from the Alan Man's point of view, I mean, you, you're, you're a well-known nationalist. I mean, you've gone to jail over the whole thing. And Alan Bell was a nationalist, but he he's, says he's seen, well, I don't put words in his mouth, but, you know, saw, saw the light and oh, decided know. what I we got is the best. I think he, uh, on, on a good uh, day, he's, he's still there. Well, do you still want, do you still see that that would be, for the Alan Man, the best route to go completely independent? Well, it, it, again, it de depends what you mean by independence. Uh, there is no country in the world that's truly independent, possibly with the exception of North Korea uh, at the moment. Uh, you know, even the biggest economies of the world, the biggest countries in the world, they are dependent on other countries. Uh, so it, it, what I'm about uh, really is constitutional independence uh, so that we can make our own decisions, so that we are not waiting for Westminster or um, whoever to approve uh, the legislation that we want to bring in. We're not waiting for approval to be allowed to do international deals on behalf of the Isle of Man. That, to my mind, doesn't seem unreasonable. Of course, a big tie was a VAT thing, which has waned now, of course, Yes, hasn't it? yeah, it's certainly uh, significantly us. less important now. Uh, I mean, I think it's still very, very convenient for business on the island that we have that arrangement, um, and it would be a, a shame if we, had to, if, if we lost that. But uh, there are opportunities which we perhaps don't explore because we don't want to to, to make to, to sort of uh, uh, I don't know o open that particular uh, door to allow people to see that actually inside that door there might be something quite exciting uh, so we don't tend to look at the opportunities we just be, because what we've got is easy and straightforward and uh, let, let, let's stick with what we know just, that, just in case we, we get excited by something that might be out there. As I put Alex Allen himself, I said you, you win whatever happens and, and it looks like it because they've got more legislation going through, more independence in the sense of their, their own parliament and what they can do and tax raising or revenues and changing their rates could be a worry for the Isle of Man. It, it could be and uh, that said, um, what is said the day before an election and what's said uh, maybe a few weeks after will be sure. quite different and, and my, my big worry for the, the Scots is you know all, already uh, the nationalist agenda has disappeared from, from the mainstream news agenda it's all now about what may or may not be promised we had uh, Nigel Farage straight on saying well I didn't I haven't agreed to any of this he's going to be trying to harvest a lot of conservative votes that will to stabilise the Conservative Party. They're going to be then concerned about what they've promised. And, and by the time we get to this time next year, is it after the, the UK's general election, I would be very surprised if the bold promises that have been given are even close to what's delivered. One more in this section, only because we've got you here, and it's about the user agreement with the Steam Packet, which is still on, obviously, well, it's not been sorted, basically. And is it in hand? We, we had this interview with the, the chairman who kind of let it go that 
things suddenly were moving, but he'd been trying for years to get the online government to sort this out. Where are we up to? Well, they have been trying for years, and, and, and I, I can kind of understand from a steam packet point of view why they might want that to happen. But 2026 is the option that the steam packet has. Certainly 2020 is, is, is when the, uh, the, the current user agreement um, though the steam packet could get out of the current user agreement, but they are actually in it potentially till 2026 if they choose to, to opt for that ex ex extra extension. So there isn't that much of a rush on it. Bearing in mind it's only 2014, there's 12 more years potentially for this to run. So there isn't a, a, an urgent need to, to address this um, on, on that sort of more general basis. There are though some areas of concern that obviously Isle of Man government has had for, for a few years now and that is particularly in relation to the ownership of the company and how we, you know, we've sort of bounced from one um, uh, venture capitalist to another venture capitalist in, in fairly concerning uh, sorts of uh, ways. Uh, so there is an opportunity perhaps for us to negotiate a new arrangement whether it's with the steam packet or some other uh, agency. Um, Do you want to see competition? Um, what I want to see is what's available. I want to, so what we want to do as a government is, is actually list what, what actually do we need for the people of the Isle of Man? What do we need to make this uh, island strong, to make sure that the economy is strong in the Isle of Man? What are the things that are fundamental to us? Um, and having agreed what those things are, we then need to go out and see what options we actually have. Is competition a real option or, or, or as we've seen in the past, does competition just, just weaken Well, the side of competition sides. coming along suddenly reduced all these prices and the yes, prices, absolutely. just the whiff of a potential And, and, and we only have to, yes, I, I mean, potentially competition could be a good thing. Uh, maybe it's not, uh, but that's something we would have to look at. There are a raft of other things that we'd need to look at you know, in terms of the Irish routes, in terms of regular sailings, in terms of whether we need a fast craft, whether we don't need a fast craft, uh, whether um, it is right to have a exclusivity deal on link spans or whether we have some other arrangement whereby anyone can lose, use the link spans so long as they provide a certain amount of services. There's a whole range of different ways okay. we could do this. Any ideas when you'd like to see it in place, an agreement or, or to the way forward so all parties know where they're going and the steam packet claim they need to know that because they want to invest in more ships? Yes and, and that that's the steam packets argument I think it's a reasonable argument on their side uh, as I say the, the key thing for us though is the stability of our of whoever it is that's Time providing table. our sea link Any so so there is um, an opportunity for us over the next year or so to year reach so. to reach some kind of agreement um, which if we if that agreement was with the steam packet would then give us some security over who actually okay. is owning would you the, like the, this the done before your tenures up, for instance, at the next election, for instance, would you like to see this through yourself? Um, I don't think I want to, to tie myself down to timetables specifically because, in reality, we've got potentially up to 12 years here. Um, certainly, we've got six years. Uh, so there isn't a, an urgency for the Isle of Man government other than um, we know that the, the, the current uh, bank that owns the, the, the vast majority of the shares of the steam packet uh, is a relatively stable uh, bank, um, but the, you know, if, if they choose to sell their shares to, to, to venture capitalists again in the future, we could be back on our roller coaster ride. So the sooner we could um, come up with something which guarantees ownership, uh, would be uh, you know that would probably be in the best interest of the other man. But we've got to look at it in the round. We've got to look at all the options uh, and see whether the user agreement is, is still fit for purpose. Whether there are other things that we could do and find out what else there is out in the marketplace that might be able to help us.